We all know the hype on 24 Gold. I want to discuss its flanker, 24 Gold Oud Edition, and see if this is worth your money. Tune in to the Robes 08 Standard 30-Minute Fragrance Review on Oud Edition and see if it's worth your money. Let's go. <laughs> Hey YouTube Fragrance family, welcome to another Robes 08 Fragrance Review. Today is on the House of Scent story and the set called 24 Gold Oud Edition. Let's go! 24 Gold Oud Edition hit the shelves in 2013. The only bottle size it comes in is the one that you see here, the 3.4 ounce bottle. The Concentration is Eau de Toilette. Uh, this is actually a flanker of the original 24 Gold. As far as uh, pricing, um, it, it does vary, so very much do your research. Um, you can find it usually what this is going around for is around $60 to $80 online, give or take. Um, so it's almost uh, a, a second tier designer right now. It's not on the Chanel and Dior pricing range, but it, it is getting fairly pricey. I do remember back in the day, these 24 fragrances used to be almost a third or fourth tier price range so um, they are starting to get a little pricier however you can uh, look around and try to find it for around 50 to 60 bucks I'm sure you can find it for that price yeah. <laughs> now looking at presentation let's go box first uh, as you can see the first thing that catches my eye is like the gold dust appeal on this box it, it has a uh, actual feel to it also it almost feels like they sprinkled a bunch of gold dust on top of the box um, this is obviously a uh, little embossed here gold 24 oud edition um, you got the same kind of logo up top here flip it on the side it has that 24 for the show there um, and then uh, some more information in the back here and some information at the bottom so let's take a look at the bottle itself now looking at the bottle itself, uh, it has that exact look of the 24 gold. So I'm not going to spend too much uh, time on it. It's just lacquered in gold. It says instead of 24, it says 24 Oud edition. So the 24 logo is a little smaller. Oh, the toilet, the bottom, um, kind of like a uh, metallic gold look to the bottle. 100 mils down here, Fox uh, logo there. Sticker at the bottom, um, taking off the cap. Um, this one, the atomizer, let's see how it does. A uh, pretty decent atomizer on this bottle. <laughs> now let's delve into the note breakdown. We got nutmeg, cinnamon, tangerine, and pink pepper in the opening. So a very different opening from the original 24. You're going to get quite a bit of spice in this fragrance. And that is a theme here in the Oud edition. In the mid, tons of woods. And that's another theme in this fragrance. We got vetiver, sandalwood, guyac wood, cedar wood, and birch. In the base, uh, a, little, a little more... Um, sweetness in the fragrance we got amber vanilla bean we got musk and obviously the big note in the oud edition is oud now the major notes to my nose cinnamon vanilla amber tangerine and guyac wood so woody spicy with some sweetness is pretty much a describing this fragrance in a nutshell you can tell that the major notes to my nose is missing one particular note which is the oud yeah that's not a typo. Um, that's not me missing out on that. No. And I'm going to tell you guys during the uh, deconstruction of this fragrance where the oud is. Group, this is a sweet, spicy fragrance. Now let's take a look at application, my how many sprays and where. I go three sprays with this fragrance. It has very good longevity and projection, so less is more with 24 Gold Oud Edition. I do my standard first spray on the chest, uh, bare chested. Put a shirt on and then I'm going to do my double spritz on the neck, my standard, boom, boom. Three sprays um, worked very well for me, especially uh, during um, this winter season, um, which is very surprising. So it has some oomph to it, works very well, and you don't have to go too crazy with the atomizer with this one. So what do I get? Well, first of all, let me refresh myself. You know, I know I have my notes of all the testing I've done, but I like to, yeah. <laughs> Sweet, uh, sweet, spicy reminds me of One Million. Um, it, it's not a secret that this thing um, smells like One Million. I'm going to take 24 gold out of the picture here. This is the spotlight on the Oud. Um, yeah, the opening of 24 gold Oud tells you right away you are not getting an Oud-based 24 gold. I know, um, I know that 
the introduction won't say it all. Like oud sometimes peaks out in fragrances more into the dry down, and I'm gonna get to that. But right away, what do I get? The opening takes uh, very familiar characteristics from the original 24 Gold, but they're taking the back seat to the new notes. And the new notes, no, they are not oud. Um, there are other notes in this fragrance that really are inflamed in this introduction. <laughs> now, off the top of 24 Gold Oud Edition, it shows a sweet, spicy character. The spices, mostly cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Cinnamon steals the show in Oud uh, Edition. That paired with a tangerine note immediately, immediately <laughs> brought myself to, and other users of this fragrance to One Million by Paco Rabanne. Um, it really is kind of stealing a page, almost a whole chapter of One Million by Paco Rabanne. Um, that opening is so familiar, easy to pinpoint. You know, a baby could uh, pinpoint One Million in the opening of this fragrance. Now, I'm not saying it's not a pleasant opening because, you know, One Million uh, does it's thing it's a top seller across the world is a pleasant opening since i do love cinnamon however not really unique in my eyes so it kind of loses the edge there is it worth buying well that's up to you but i'm telling you what i get in the opening you get a glimpse of the woods too that will start showing more into the dry down the woods are mostly the gayak wood naughty oud uh wood here <laughs> The beautiful and full raspberry note in the opening of the original. This one right here. Oh my god, the raspberry note in this. Um, it really drew my interest in this fragrance. I absolutely loved it. Um, however, in the Oud edition, it is not as full or as pronounced. It is in the introduction. You get a little tad of it, but it really is in the background. The newer notes, the cinnamon, the spices, the woods, the amber coming through. And that raspberry just gets lost in the fold. You almost have to... Um, you almost have to start digging your nose into your skin to find it behind all that cinnamon, that nutmeg. There's some pink pepper in here. The tangerine's pushing itself. You got some sweetness here. Um, so there's a lot of sweet and spicy facets in this opening that really just overshadow that raspberry. And I'll be honest, the raspberry note in the original is killer. And in this fragrance, it is a, so muted that I can't even like, it, it, it's a sad part because that's a huge part of the original. I loved it. Um, so I felt personally, personally, I felt this was a huge mistake to mask that amazing note in the original. I think that was one of the huge appeals in the original. Now, let's go more into the dry down of this fragrance. Now it dries down on your skin a little bit more. It really became clear that that familiar backbone of amber is going to continue its trend uh, from the original 24 gold. So they do keep that ambery... Uh, backbone to the fragrance in this uh, Oud edition. Um, it is mostly paired with uh, cinnamon, which continues to push from the opening. It does a great job in this fragrance, the cinnamon. Um, it keeps this fragrance uh, fairly spicy. Um, the amber and cinnamon are, are backed by wood. So the, the wood combo in the mid there, you, I told you guys in the note breakdown, you know, you got vetiver, sandalwood, cedarwood, guyac wood, you got birch. Um, you get, uh, you get, some of those, some of those I, I didn't feel were very present in this fragrance, to be quite honest. So really the big one mostly was Gayak Wood in my uh, particular uh, opinion. I felt like the Gayak Wood was there, uh, the Cedar was there. Uh, there's a pinch of Birch too in here. Um, those were the ones that were a little more prominent, but it has more of a woody, uh, spicy feel with the amber. Um, so it does have that appeal if you really like those. It, it makes the fragrance uh, much darker, obviously, um, which makes it a, a more of a winter friendly type fragrance. Now on to the Oud because it's named Oud Edition. What do I get? Well, if you're expecting Oud, <laughs> if you're expecting a wallop of Oud, uh, cue the music. Bow, bow, bow. Um, because I never felt any huge impact from the oud in this fragrance to really declare this an oud-based scent. I, I really don't. This is far from it. It certainly has a woody aspect to the scent, which is much more pronounced um, than the original. However, that does not qualify this scent as a oud-based fragrance. Just because you put a heavy dose of woods in this fragrance doesn't mean it's oud. I know oud derives from wood, but come on now. So... <laughs> To those thinking that they would get that beautiful raspberry note in the intro with the amber back in it with an enhanced oud note, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And that's why I'm here reviewing these kind of fragrances, to let you guys know 
Is this a gimmick? I think so. Uh, personally, I, I think so. The, the naming of the fragrance is not correct, personally. Now, putting that whole oud thing aside and kind of getting out of the whole marketing, the misnaming of the fragrance and things like that, uh, just judging this on a fragrance blindly. Overall, 24 Gold Oud Edition is a solid release. I can't knock it for some of the great things it does. It does. It has excellent longevity. It has very good projection. Um, does it smell nice? Yeah. Uh, the blend? Very, very good. Is it unique? No. Um, is it as good as 24 Gold? No. <laughs> it, it's not. Um, so it does do some great things. If you don't own 1 million or the million cents that replicate 1 million, you know, if you have a small collection and you don't really have like a sweet fragrance and you really want it and you got, I don't know, somebody selling a used bottle for like 20 bucks and you're like, eh, maybe this is something that's viable for me. Um, I think it's a excellent purchase for that kind of pricing, uh, for that kind of person. Price is a huge factor here because you can get 1 million now for a little cheaper online. Um, I would recommend 1 million or all the million different kind of fragrances that are trying to copycat that introduction uh, to go there. Um, if you love the original 24 Gold, this isn't worth your money, in my opinion. It gives something new to the scent story lineup, but every lineup needs one of these. I guess the, the, the Tangerine Cinnamon opening, uh, every every brand seems like they're doing one of these. Um, so now that scent story did it, you've done it, there you go. Um, it's nothing new to the rest of the fragrance world. So that is something that is a huge downfall for this fragrance, uh, especially for me, for somebody that owns so many fragrances it really didn't give me anything that i could just say wow like this is something new no it's it's very solid but at the same time you know there's so many fragrances that do the same kind of thing so it's a solid fragrance performance wise yeah you're not gonna have any complaints in that department um it's well blended it, it really is a solid release at the same time it's almost in a sea of other fragrances that have done the same thing and really, it's just a crapshoot. What do you want? Um, as far as being any Oud Edition fragrance, uh, <laughs> I think I've already stepped on that. Um, I really don't think that this is something for the Oud lovers out there. So let's go into the stats. Recommended age, any age. I really think the sweetness, uh, the spiciness, and the woodiness of this fragrance can be warm for basically anybody. Um, if you're a teenager, you love sweet fragrances, this might be up your alley. I, I it might be a little too spicy or a little too woody for you. So those are things to keep in mind. Uh, reminds people of what? Well, it does remind people of the original 24 Gold. Obviously, it's derived from that. Um, it takes a pinch from it. I think it has a little bit of the backbone, but it's very much muted in this fragrance. It just feels like the only real note that kept its factor was the amber. Um, it reminds people of 1 million. Obviously, the tangerine cinnamon, I'm um, just uh, going uh, head and head. And I could pinpoint other notes that are the same in both fragrances, but I'm not going to bore you guys on that. Um, Spice Bomb, same thing. Some people say that this smells a little bit from Spice Bomb, and I agree. Spice Bomb is a cinnamon bomb. Um, so obviously the cinnamon, the pink pepper are, are in both fragrances, so it'll remind you of Spice Bomb too. So these are two 1 million Spice Bomb, or two top sellers in the game here. Uh, awards on my channel, no, I just got this bottle, so no awards on my channel yet. Best time to wear this fragrance, this would be a casual wear fragrance. I would see this as a nighttime only seasons mostly winter and fall again you can wear it in the summer and spring nighttime only um, i think this is a nighttime staple casual use um, would be a really good one you could go to the clubs with this easily um, as far as development goes is it linear average or complex no it's, it's more uh average i would say it's not it's not linear either so it's right in the middle. It does have some movement to the fragrance, but not much. So more of an average. Work appropriate? Ah, not really. I think it has a lot of power to it that you could really overspray this fragrance. You'd be that cologne guy in the office, depending what the office is for you. Cubicle-wise, uh, people are, this scent is going to jump over cubicles. <laughs> so really work appropriate? Not really. I wouldn't recommend it for it. Signature scent worthy? Ooh, that depends on you. Um, an older gentleman, I think guys like myself, 30 and over now, um, this is going to be one of those scents that you spray on at night sometime. It's not going to be signature scent. Younger folks, I could see this as a signature scent. You know, you're going to school, you're going to the clubs, you're going out with friends, going to the pool hall, going to movies, things like that. Um, I could see this as a signature scent. I wouldn't wear it in the heat, though, though so just be careful with that. Now, why would you hate it? Mislabeling. 
People get angry. Fragheads get angry with that. If you're going to call something Oud edition, there better be a wallop of Oud. Was there? No. People are going to get angry at this. <laughs> People that were hoping for a better 24 gold. You know, they love the original. They're like, oh, it's the Oud edition. If they amp up the Oud, keep that raspberry intro with the uh, amber backbone. Um, I think we have a real winner here. Uh, no. Um, the Oud it was not... Uh, how could I say inflamed? Um, it really was not. Um, smells like many designer top sellers. So that's another. Now, why would you love it? There's tons of reasons to love 24 Gold Oud Edition. Um, it has good performance. The blend is good. The scent is it smells nice, um, depending on your taste. Um, anybody that's collecting one million clo clones, like uh, like Pokemon cards. Um, this is one of those Pokemon cards that you have to collect. Um, it does smell like one million, so you better collect them all. <laughs> um, but uh, no, if you do like sweet fragrances, sweet woody uh, fragrances with a little bit of spice, um, this is where you'd come. Um, if you own one million or, or you know, Code Proof Rumo or man, I could just go, the list goes on and on, um, then this is a redundant release for you. Um, it really doesn't jump off as saying, oh, you know, the uniqueness of this compared to the one millions out there. Um, the difference is it, it's not warranting a purchase. That's pretty much what I'm saying here. <laughs> now let's get into my rating system projection longevity. Two weights. Um, I can't deny that projection is good to excellent with this fragrance. Um, I really had uh, really positive results with this fragrance uh, this winter with projection and longevity, both eights. Uh, longevity seven to nine hours any given wearing, so that is very, very solid. So really good score there. Compliment factor, wholly surprising. Um, again, you know, when I think one million, I think compliment getter. This got a five as a compliment factor. Um, it was average. I was thinking because it was so close to one million that it would garner more compliments. No, um, it really kind of flopped. It was really just average. You know, some people like it, some people don't like it for particular reasons. So it really didn't wow people, especially with the push that this thing has. It does have projection. Um, I felt like it was gonna get uh, a lot more attention than uh, other fragrances and it really didn't. So comment factor five. Uniqueness four, um, really it takes a hit here. As you guys know in my review, it's not very unique. Um, it takes a lot from a lot of top sellers. So unfortunately, uniqueness takes a hit. Pricing versus what you get. I gave it a above average score. You get seven bottles out of 10 here because you do get a solid fragrance. It's a solid scent. If you have a very small collection, um, I must say it is a solid buy in regards to that. Um, you can get probably better fragrances um, for the price range, unfortunately. So pricing versus what you get, it, it's a seven is a very good score for it. Versatility, seven again. Um, could be versatile enough. Again, it's one of those fragrances I wouldn't wear in the high heat humidity. So seven there. Um, smell, again, very solid. Seven, it is a solid scent as far as smell goes. It's just not unique. Overall, seven bottles out of 10. I think that's a, a very much a theme here, a seven for this one. Um, really an okay release that they were trying to bank on that one million hype that a lot of these uh, designer fragrances, uh, fragrance brands are doing. So um, really it's nothing that is standing out. It is a little above average um, as far as a complete package is a seven. That goes to buy, try, or pass. Now buy, try, or pass has so many factors before I make a decision on if it's a buy, try, or pass. Um, the main factor here, uniqueness, what is it giving me for the price, um, are huge factors, uh, mismarketing with the Oud Edition, things like that. Um, really, is this one fragrance, if I smelt this and I had all the designers in my collection to go through, would this get picked out of the bunch? And my answer was no. So that is a pass. Um, this is not something that I would recommend to the viewers out there. Um, I really think that, especially if you're like, ooh, I love this, I really, really love this, and I wanna get a flanker, I wanna see what the rest does. Um, this is something that I recommend. If you're into that, this is what you're getting. I told you guys exactly what you're getting. I don't think it's worth it. I prefer the original 24 Gold. I think that one's very, very good. Um, there's really some great qualities in that one um, that they removed in this flanker that it makes the flanker inferior in almost every way. However, projection longevity are still very solid in this one, which makes it a very good scent. 
Um, so that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Please comment below if you have smelt this fragrance. Good, bad, and the ugly. I like to hear if you agree with me, disagree with me. That's all gravy. I love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> this fragrance review was brought to you by fragranceby.ca. To all my Canadian viewers out there, if you are interested in buying this particular fragrance or any other fragrance on Fragrance By, go over there. You can get free shipping with my code ROBES08 for any purchase over $50. So go check out fragranceby.ca.